Just Joe here and I've got too many movies. Maybe I should watch one. Okay, it is that time of the week again, children. Yes, I am going to watch another movie from my collection that I have never seen before. I'm excited as always. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say it is almost October. We're only a couple days away. Uh, Sunday, it's gonna be October 1st. Of course, October is now synonymous with Halloween. <laughs> Halloween, that's what it is synonymous for. So in Halloween, for every Friday in October, I am going to watch a scary movie, a Halloween type movie that I have never seen before. So if any of you have any suggestions for any movies from my collection that I, that are scary or thrillers or whatever, be kind of a good time to watch it because it is ha ho ho ween then please make a suggestion, watch the video, uh, links in the description below, and you know, uh, watch the, uh, the, 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 more coffee. Look through my collection and you know see what other scary movies I have and make a suggestion. Maybe I've seen it, maybe I haven't. But this is the last Friday in September and I'm going to watch a movie that people have been recommending to me for years because it's by one of the greatest directors, greatest writers, greatest filmmakers ever in Hollywood history and I have not seen one of his movies and I've collected most of them but I have not seen any of them and the first one that everyone always suggests to me is the one I'm going to watch today. It has been shoved down my throat. They said if you want to be a filmmaker you have to watch A Clockwork Orange. And of course, the writer-director that I'm talking about is Stanley Kubrick. And I've seen so many clips of his stuff. 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, Eyes Wide Shut, Full Metal Jacket, even Clockwork Orange, The Shining. Like, this is a triple pack of 2001, Clockwork Orange, and Shining. Pretty damn good deal on Amazon, actually. Only about 13 bucks if you have Amazon Prime. So, you're welcome, Amazon Prime. Free advertising. <laughs> But people, if you're going to watch a Stanley Kubrick film, the first one to ever watch is they always say A Clockwork Orange. Which means, once again, I say it a lot, it, it was kind of overhyped for me. And I didn't, I was scared to watch it. And I'm still, I'm still scared to watch it. Because what if I don't like it? What if I don't get it? What if I don't get Kubrick's work? It's a lot like the Coen brothers. You know, we know they're geniuses, but their movies kind of leave us going, I know I just saw something awesome, art, but what the fuck did I just watch? So, maybe that's how I feel about this, maybe not, but I'm gonna go watch it right now, Clockwork Orange, you know, I'm gonna watch it, I'm gonna see if I like it or not, and that's how it's gonna go, and I'll be right back, bye! <laughs> Okay, so I watched Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange, and I really don't know how to feel about it. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I said earlier, <laughs> what the fuck did I just watch? What was that? It was beautiful, and it was art, but it was also confusing and weird. Which basically describes Stanley Kubrick, I guess. That's what I've always heard about his work. Um, now, please don't take that as I didn't enjoy it. I love this movie. I, I got it, but I didn't. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it. Uh, I, I love this movie. And this was a wonderful introduction to Stanley Kubrick's weird-ass imagination and adaptations of wonderful books and his writing style, his directing style, editing, uh acting just okay so anyway let's go ahead and get into it i'll give you my thoughts about it let's go ahead and start with the plot slash the script okay so clockwork orange basically the plot is 
It's not that confusing, but it is confusing. Uh, a Clockwork Orange basically stars Alex, played by Malcolm McDowell, wonderfully by Malcolm McDowell, McDowell but I'll get to that. Uh, Alex and his little gang of thugs uh, live in this kind of dystopian, even though it's not really dystopian, it kind of is at first, and then it shows shots of back then, like a modern day, uh, I'm actually not really quite sure where it takes place. England, Europe, whatever. Uh, but, yeah, whatever. It's kind of like Mad Max. You just kind of, you have to forgive it or you don't. And in this case, unlike Mad Max, I will forgive it. Because there's a lot more dystopian stuff than there was in Mad Max. So, <laughs> once again, fuck you first, Mad Max movie. That was hard to say. But anyway, um, Alex is just this asshole. This young asshole. I'm not quite sure what their ages are. I'm guessing they're teenagers or... Because they still go to school, unless they go to college, so maybe early 20s, but I think teenagers. Uh, but basically, they rape, <laughs> they beat people up. At the very beginning of the movie, they beat up this drunk dude because they want to, they make fun of him. Uh, they break into some guy's house, they beat him up and make him watch while they rape his wife. And I can make anything funny, but not that. Not even gonna try. Coffee. They basically, they just do whatever they want, they're juveniles, and there is a police... Uh, presence in this world, but they haven't been caught yet. And Alex, apparently, you know, he skips school all the time. He doesn't want to go. His friends do as well. He runs this, you know, the gang of his other three friends. You know, they fight this other gang at the beginning of the movie when the other gang is trying to rape a woman. And there's just a lot, there's a lot of rape. There's actually a lot of rape in this movie. A lot. Women are not treated well. And if you didn't see my last movie, uh, Wonder Woman and see how I reacted to that movie and about women in Hollywood You can probably guess I really didn't like the way women were treated in this movie But it did add to the story like I it, it wasn't a woman it, <laughs> The movie wasn't a woman <laughs> I'm losing my fucking mind the movie wasn't about you know berating women It's not what it's about. It's just women weren't exactly treated well But it made sense because the men in this the gangs or whatever. They don't give a shit man woman anything. They don't care. They do whatever they want. They take whatever they want. And usually that means a woman's body. But, you know, they keep doing this. Alex is in charge of his gang of friends. You know, his parents, they don't really try to control him, but they know something's wrong. He's been getting treatments from this doctor, but obviously it's not going very well. And this really weird, awkward scene where the doctor eventually puts his hand on Alex's junk. And that's, I mean, that's bad touch. If a doctor ever did that to me when I was a kid, you know, I wouldn't have liked it. And Alex didn't like it. You know, so we got that in common. Just, we got everything, you know, a lot of stuff in common. I like to go against the grain. I just don't like the rape. No rape. Me and Alex, I don't rape. Alex likes to rape. I really need to stop saying rape. Rhymes with grape. That doesn't make it better. But, you know, uh, he, he's still doing his thing. He even beats up his friends when they try to rise against him, try to get them to do more. They break into this other woman's house. And it's basically a setup. They leave him uh, to get caught by the police, and he's... Uh, sent to be sent to prison and then he volunteers for this reform program to be reformed to be turned into a good citizen uh, Because they'll get him out of jail earlier and they they don't really break him uh, But then it turns out they did break him. They use his favorite music against him I am still a little unsure if they meant to do that. I think it was a coincidence um, They like keep his that famous scene they keep his eyes open make him watch really bad shit uh, And it gets to him he becomes violently or not violently, I'm sorry, but he gets very ill, very sick, and is almost paralyzed when he tries to beat somebody up or wants to have sex or something. He is reformed, but once he's released back into the world, you know, nothing is there for him. And, it, you know, the, the character doesn't really learn anything. He's still the same old Alex, even when he can't do anything. And even by the end of the movie, you know... It, I don't think he really learned anything, and I, I know that that was that was the point. Alex isn't going to change, and you can't try to change people. Um, but at still, the end of the movie, the journey that he goes on is really fucked up. And so I guess he kind of got what he deserved, but then again, he didn't because the shit he did to people, Alex should have, you know, had freaking like a freaking taser to his nuts constantly for the rest of his life because he is a bad dude. Uh, but. Without ruining, I don't want to ruin the entire plot, uh, that's basically the plot. And the script, it was adapted from a book, and from what I've read, you know, the book, there's a lot of differences, and the original, uh, the original author of this story, of the book, uh, didn't really like the film adaptation, which seems to usually go for Stanley Kubrick things. Stephen King hated The Shining adaptation, uh, you know, it just, it's kind of just how it goes. But, you know, overall the script, I mean... It's even to this day, 40 years later, the movie stands out. It's different. Um, just the dialogue that's used. Uh, Alex narrates his story the entire movie. And, you know, 
uh, he the way he talks is very odd and very weird and you kind of have to listen closely to really get it and a lot of the time they speak so fast uh, and I had to rewind it a lot because I couldn't understand what they were saying plus you know they with their accents and they kind of speak in cogni or whatever it's called I can't remember and I'm not worldly sorry from a small town in Indiana I don't know other languages <laughs> corn but he never yeah but he never it's the entire thing and that's really weird but even the dialogue they use it's to me the dialogue doesn't really help tell the story I mean it does there's no real exposition except at the beginning with the drunk guy but it's necessary so the movie isn't exposition heavy or anything you really get a, a gist of what this world is from the very beginning because of that drunk and because of Alex's narration and everything so it's it's a very well put together script Stanley Kubrick as far as I know you know his scripts are you know always well written you know a very interesting dialogue in the movie and the way it's written um, like the first 40 minutes I wasn't bored I just wasn't invested I, I was interested but not really uh, once Alex gets put in, put in jail uh, from that moment on uh, I thought the dialogue picked up the story picked up and it got me like for the rest of the movie and you don't know where it's gonna go and only good writers can do that to keep you guessing like where the hell is a story going because it's really a story I haven't seen before in a movie I mean I, I know it's been done but not like this and but the script they put together I got no beef with uh, it, it's different it's unique uh, it reminds me a lot of Birdman except a lot more fucked up it just it has its own style its own pace its own type of dialogue uh, and even though to me it didn't really help tell the story I kind of like that where like you listen to what they're saying but it, it is kind of more about the visuals and the characters themselves uh, than really what they're saying but like I said the script was solid okay next up I talk about the cast slash the characters Mainly the star of the show is Alex, played by Malcolm McDowell. This is probably this is one of his most well-known roles, and he knocks it out of the park. I, I give him a lot of credit. He really had to do some heinous shit in this movie, and even though yeah, it's not real, it's really it can't be comfortable for him to like the, the like the infamous singing in the rain thing. He's sing he's and I guess he ad libbed it where he's singing in the rain. He's singing in the rain right before he beats up the old guy and rapes his wife. Uh, yeah, that that can't be fun as an actor. That's got to be just draining because to, to do something so horrible, you know, you're in the moment and, but he, it, I never got a sign of him being bothered by it. I know during the scene where his eyes are kept open to watch the movies, he, his cornea got scratched. They actually really did it. And there's a real doctor next to him dropping water to keep his, it's just like the shit he went through in this movie, um, got the crap kicked out of him, you know, got broken ribs. Like he really gave himself to Stanley Kubrick and Stanley Kubrick could ride an actor into the ground. Shelly Duvall. And you know, I give him all the credit in the world, but he, he does it. He knocks it out of the park with this part. It's, it is amazing to watch and he carries the movie. And that's, that's really it when it comes to, to the cast. I mean, like, there's plenty of characters in this, but they're just weird-ass characters. Like the doctor at the beginning, he was a freaking weirdo, man. And he, he spoke really weird. The actor was a fucking oddball and kind of annoying. And now the, the one supporting character, I mean, Alex's parents are fine. His friends were fine. Like everyone did a great job. They're fine. But the most memorable besides Alex is the security, I'm not security, I'm sorry, the prison guard. He is freaking hilarious. He takes his job seriously. He is awesome I wish there was more of in the movie he was freaking awesome I liked him uh, but that's uh, but the cast did a great job just that doctor the beginning was really weird but in, in got on my nerves it was a long scene and I just wanted to end but at the same time he was memorable so I guess I get why Stanley Kubrick wanted him or he owed him a favor and the characters in this like again Alex is the main and he's the one you watch he's the one that, whose story you follow he narrates it for God's sakes and the rest of the characters are fine his friends you know you remember them even though they're not in it for very long but when two of them pop up again later it is kind of a shock and you do remember them because they made an impression and the doctors made an impression that police guy that character was awesome my second favorite character honestly no he was my favorite character very close tie not tie but very almost a tie with Alex but he was my favorite because he was making me laugh my ass off Alex you don't root for because he's a complete douchebag I don't want I don't relate to him but the prison card he was freaking awesome uh, but 
honestly, that's really it. Nobody else stands out in terms of the characters. Everyone did their jobs, they were written well, and the cast was very good, and the characters were really good, and good! And last but not least, talk about the directing, editing, and the music! It's Stanley Kubrick. It's Stanley Kubrick. One of the greatest directors of all time. What am I gonna do, shit on his work? I can't. Because it's amazing how I feel like with his move, I'm sorry, his movie, I've, I've seen plenty of his shots and movies and scenes, but his directing style is so weird. It's so different and unique, and it just seems like a lot of shots like, that's wrong. Why did you do that? But he was a visionary. And Clockwork Orange is a masterpiece in direction because the direction made me uncomfortable. A lot of weird close-ups like this, just really weird close-ups and you got really, you know, I'm seeing myself in the hi. But yeah, just a lot of really weird stuff, but it makes, again, it adds to it. And I'm sure his other movies are like that too. In fact, I know they are from what I've seen and his directing style it is brilliant. He was brilliant behind a camera. He he thought differently. He thought outside the box. And even if there are just kind of normal shots, the very next one, you're like, what the fuck was he thinking? Why? Or why is this such a long one shot? Why is the shot so far away? Why is the shot so close up? What the hell was he thinking? We don't know. But we know that it made for a miraculously directed movie. So kudos Stanley Kubrick. I cannot wait to watch more of your work. And the editing was good. Um, I have no complaints about the editing. I really have nothing to say about it. It wasn't uniquely edited like it was directed or written or even acted. You know, the, the editing, you know, the story, the movie, I'm sorry, the movie was, you know, two hours and, you know, 16 minutes. The first 40 was a little slow, but it needed to have everything it had in it. I get that. But the rest of it just flowed wonderfully and just flew by. And I give a lot of that credit to the editing. Um, and the way the editor, it might have been Stanley Kubrick actually who edited, who edited the movie. I know he edited some other, yeah. I don't know if he did or not. But whoever edited the movie, you know, um, they deserve a big hand and they probably don't get that a lot because Stanley Kubrick gets most of the credit or Malcolm McDowell. Uh, but the editing this was great. And the music, the soundtrack is so unique because they use a lot of classical music in this. I wish I could get the soundtrack. It's not on iTunes. Uh, which is a shame, but maybe there's a CD out of it somewhere. Remember CDs, kids? <laughs> Probably not. But it's a lot, it's like Beethoven and stuff like that, and it actually plays, the music plays an important part in the movie. Music plays a very important part, and I love the soundtrack. I love a soundtrack with classical music, because even though this movie's 40 years old, it's still not done that much. And it's a shame, because that music is still the greatest music ever. No matter what music we get in the future, or what music we've already had, nothing will ever top classical music. So I love it when, a, when uh, movies have a, a classical type score or uh, whatever, uh, but I mean to actually use the classics, these classic, you know, original instrumental, oh god, I just, I love it so much, but the music in this was, was perfect. I can't think of one song that didn't fit. So my final thoughts on Clockwork Orange, it's, it's weird, man, because <laughs> I did, I loved it a lot. It took a good 40 minutes in, but once I got into it, I was hooked. I was hooked into this world and the characters and Alex and his story, wondering where the movie was gonna go. Uh, you know, I, a lot of the dialogue I loved, but it just more I just wanted to see these char this character, his journey, what was gonna happen, if he was gonna make it, if he was gonna be reformed, you know, just, and really I was excited to see what the sets would look like. And was, I was, I was more, I will say this, and this does affect the score, which I'll get to in a second. I was more interested in the technical aspects of the movie than the movie itself. And maybe I just need to watch it a lot more. I've heard Stanley Kubrick movies, you, you need to watch it many times to really get it. And that's good. It's like a Coen, a Coen Brothers movie. It's, it, that's not a bad thing about a movie if it takes... I still don't get No Country for Old Men. I've only seen it once, but I don't get it. I need to watch it more. <coughs> <coughs> Mm. Yeah, it's just, I, I, I get the movie, and I kind of get the message he was going for, but it's going to take a few more viewings for me, I think, to fully get it, and that's not a bad thing. But I really was more, I was more into the direction of the movie, and, you know, the sets. You know what I mean? Like, as a filmmaker, myself, uh, I was more into that 
than the movie itself. I didn't... I got invested in the movie, but I didn't really get lost in the movie, like you're supposed to with the good movie. So, and that's just how it was this time. I'm sure the next time, that stuff I've already I've already paid attention to, and this time I can just focus on the movie itself. And this movie is a movie I will rewatch, but not right away. I don't feel an urge to go and rewatch it again. I need to wait, even if it's just a week. I need to wait a little bit. So, as much as I think, you know, the, the movie didn't have a narrative, I think, that it really needed. Uh, the message, even though I kind of get what he was going for, it, it was a little bit lost on me. You know what I mean? Like, I just... It, I, I don't think the story was as, as great as the script was. And it was a great adaptation, and just a great script anyway. I don't think... I don't think the story was as well-focused as it needed to be. Uh, because I eventually just kind of stopped paying attention. I just wanted to see what would happen to Alex and some of the other characters. And I was invested, but I didn't I didn't really care where the story went. I just wanted to see where it went. And I, I'm splitting hairs here, and even thinking about it now, I was originally just going to give this a 4 out of 5, which is high. That's very high. But thinking about it now, and talking about it, even with these little minor issues I have, and honestly, they are kind of minor, this is a masterpiece. This lived up to the hype. It did. It very much lived up to the hype. And Stanley Kubrick is a genius, and I cannot wait to watch more of his work. I kind of wish, honestly, that next month was in October, so I wouldn't... I don't have to watch Halloween movies, but I want to. It's it's fun. It's fun to have a themed month, you know, on this on Tubi Movies. And... But maybe after that I'll get to more Stanley Kubrick movies, but I, I can't wait to watch more of his work because I have the majority of his movies. And I want to see more of his stuff because obviously I'll learn from them. I think I learned a lot from uh, A Clockwork Orange, but in the future when I want to rewatch it again, uh, hopefully, honestly, like maybe in a couple weeks, maybe even a week, like I said, uh, I think this time I can just watch it as a movie. But for right now, you know, it's brilliant. But there's just something a little bit missing for me. Just a little bit. But I did love it so much. But I'm gonna give a Clockwork Orange a Justo rating of four and a half out of five. <laughs> Thank you very much for tuning in to Two New Movies with me, Just Joe. And uh, uh, watch for every Friday. I have a new episode of Too Many Movies where I watch a movie from my collection. Links in the description below. See the text? <laughs> That's right because I put it up there in editing. I haven't edited this yet, but when I do, I'm gonna put that text up there and that's why it's there. So, you know, you're welcome. We'll start with a Halloween movie, whether you guys pick it for me or I pick it for myself, and I'm very excited to watch some scary movies because horror isn't exactly my favorite genre, but I do love thrillers, I love that kind of stuff, and I'm gonna go through my collection and see what I can pick or see what you guys have to suggest to me, and I cannot wait, and I cannot wait to watch more Stanley Kubrick movies. But look at all my descriptions, look, look me up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, the podcast I sometimes do, my buddy Jake, and you know, look up all that stuff, like me on Facebook, like my YouTube page, like this video, or dislike it. I don't give a shit if you don't like it or not. Not. If you don't like it, that's fine. I'm not gonna be mad about it. I guess I'm getting mad. More coffee. But I will see you guys in the next video. And it will soon be ha -lo we Bye. <laughs>